The I am that I am. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the ending, the unchangeable changer. Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The I am that I am, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Holy One of Israel. Oh, glory be to your holy name. Thank you for what you've done in the past. Thank you for what you're about to do today. Please, Lord, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. All I'm asking, Lord God Almighty, is that in the lives of all your children, all over the world, let your name be glorified today. Before this service is over, let your children know the meaning of wonderful. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Whenever someone shout hallelujah. Well, look around you. There might be two or three people you have not seen yet this year. So shake hands with them and say Happy New Year. You can't say Happy New Year and be frowning. Say, say, happy new year. The word is happy, happy. <laughs> happy new year. <laughs> all right, I want to say happy new year to all of you too. <laughs> now you may be seated except uh, those born in the month of January. If you are born in the month of January, let me hear you shout hallelujah. My Father and my God, I commit all your children born in the month of January into your hands. January is the first month of the year. For this, your children, in everything good, let them confess. In every facet of their lives, Lord, give them a brand new beginning. A new beginning of success, of joy, of miracles, of signs, of wonders, and of serving you. So let it be, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Well, if we are born in January, shout another hallelujah. I don't know exactly what God wants to do tonight, but uh, I suspect that it's going to be extraordinary. one of the powers of the double portion anointing is ability to make decrees and see them come to pass. I didn't know how far God wanted to take that. When God decrees, hmm, Nobody can change it. Believe it or not, he himself can't change it. When he decrees so, it is done. 
So when I was praying for this evening, and Daddy says, the first thing I should do is to issue certain decrees. I knew some things about to happen. So I hereby decree this will be your year. This year, you will succeed. This year, you will rejoice. This year, you will be glad. This year, God will move you from one success to a greater one. On a daily basis, this year, God will move you from glory to glory. If you receive it, shout hallelujah. He said there was a brother the other, the other time who said amen and what was troubling him got out of him. <laughs> so I said they meant loud and clear. Now he said that just before it was about to end, then he concluded, and then the choir began to worship to bring mommy forward to pray. By now I should be getting dressed. But the stomach was still misbehaving. But a few minutes after I said amen, I just felt something saying, run to the toilet. I ran to the toilet. And what was troubling me got out. Whatever is troubling you, stand on your feet and shout, Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. By the way, this will be your year of double portions. How many of you want double portion? (laughs) 
Then look at your fellow and tell him, I'm wonderful, you know. <laughs> I have a feeling that something is about to happen here tonight that can only be called wonderful. A wonder is something that happens, something so big that your mouth will open involuntarily. That you do what you would normally not do. You, you would have done it before you even know what you are doing. For example, when that girl was testifying testify about the mother who died. That, I, I mean, mouth stuffed with cutting wool, etc., etc. And then they applied uh, anointing oil, and all of a sudden, after hours, the woman came back to life. I saw all of you standing up to praise God. Nobody asked you to, but you saw a wonder. Something is going to happen in your life today. And it will be wonderful. When my pastor was testifying and he said about these killers that we laid them, and then the one who was pointing a gun at them suddenly began to dance. Who is beating the drum? Which music was he hearing? And he danced away from them, danced to their back, so that they can continue on their journey. What do you call that one? <laughs> this year, all your enemies will be confused. In the name of the one who sent me, by the time God finishes with you, people will wonder at you. So if you want to know the meaning of wonderful, we need to say, wait a minute, what was the name that the father of Jesus gave him? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. He tells us, his name shall be called wonderful. He added other names, so Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. But the first name was Wonderful. Wonderful means full of wonders. Two words combined wonder and full. I decree in the name of the one who sent me the wonders that will happen in your life this year will be many. <laughs> when you read Psalm 2 from verse 1 to 4, Psalm 2 from verse 1 to 4, David was telling us, what's wrong with all these people who are saying that we are going to deal with the anointed of God, we are going to trouble him? He said, he that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. You know what that means? When somebody is threatening you, God is laughing. If anybody says, you're not going to be promoted, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. <laughs> 
When the doctors told that young lady, take your mother home, there's nothing more we can do for her. She's going to die. No way she can live. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. If somebody tells you that you, there's no way you can ever have your own children, he that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. If anybody tells you that you are not going to see the coming year, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. If anybody tells you that there's no way you can make it in life, that you are going to die poor, he that sitteth in the heavens. <laughs> In Isaiah 54, verse 15, Isaiah 54, verse 15, God himself said, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. And whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Are they holding a meeting to describe how they are going to destroy you? He that sitteth in the heavens, Allah. So that's why no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's why for the rest of your life you should walk about victorious. Why? Because he that sitteth in the heavens, Allah. Any enemy against you this year that fails to run, the fire of God will consume. Yeah. Acts 16, 25 to the end. Make sure you read it. Take note of certain things that will happen. Number one, the foundations of prison will begin to shake. All prison doors will open. Every yoke will be loosed. Enemy will become servant. And captors will come to beg. Do you know that's what God is about to do for you tonight? You see, the reason I always ask you to shout hallelujah, the reason you find hallelujah in all my songs, is because whenever you shout hallelujah, God draws near. Thank you, Father. Well, somebody will have to stand now. The Lord said, when you said amen, he had you. But he says, there is still some things left in some people. And whatever those things are, we go when they shout hallelujah.
Amen. <laughs> Amen. Please be seated. You will testify. I say it again. You will testify. You will testify because when next you visit your doctor, what they thought they saw will no longer be there. There are many of you who are here today, you, you have no idea of what God is going to achieve through you. But they will begin to pop up now. When I was praying and I said, Lord, be, build me a boy's quarter. He said, emotion. He said, Son, don't ask me for a boy's quarter. I've decided to build you a city. This place was total jungle there. But God had already seen a place where millions can gather to shout hallelujah to him. I wasn't born here. That's when one big officer of government years ago said that he was going to uh, pull down the camp. I said, ha ah. <laughs> ha. This is not my building. You can't pull down what God is building. I will cancel your certificate of occupancy. I said, ha. Ah, my father will cancel your certificate of occupancy on the earth. Uh, somebody is bigger than somebody. Anybody threatening you, tell them. You are not my alpha. You cannot be my omega. You don't behave, I will hand you over to the Alpha and the Omega. Tell the fellow next to you, your tomorrow will be all right. <laughs> so stop worrying, stop worrying. Every sickness in your life that they attribute to old age, my father will pull them out. Thank you, Father. This one is for one particular fellow. He said, your parents are among the poorest in your village. Daddy asked me to tell you, very soon, you will be the richest. I have good news for somebody. I will see you at the top. I decree in the name that's above every other name, I will see you at the top. When God is the one promoting you, he keeps on promoting you everlastingly. You just keep on going higher and higher and higher. I decree one again, once again, I will meet you at the top. I tell you this story. Probably had it too before. Not quite sure. I went to America. 
And one of my sons put a bit of pressure on me that I should come to his house to eat. So I said, all right. So I went. And I sat on a chair before going to the dining table. And after I left, he sat on the chair and discovered that the prayer he prayed was uh, instantly answered. So he shared the testimony with his uh, friends. And they began to come to his house to sit on the same chair and pray. And they were all getting their miracles. So the news spread. And this, my son, happened to be a very funny fellow. He said, what's going on? These people want to turn my house to Mecca. So he said, I know what I will do. He went and bought another chair, the same type. He took the one that I sat on into his bedroom and put the new chair where the old one was. So when the people came, they would say, that's the chair, that's where he sat. And they were still getting their miracles. <laughs> then he discovered that the anointing didn't stop on the chair. It went right down into the ground. Tonight, as I'm sitting here, the anointing is flowing out to you. <laughs> ah, okay. Thank you, Lord. The Lord asked me to tell someone. He said, get ready for hard work. Because many doors will open simultaneously. From today onward, anybody who tries to harm you will come in contact with the hand of God. Let me say amen to this one. Oh Lord, thank you very much. The Lord said, there's someone here tonight. He said, the biggest chapter of your life is about to open. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my. Tell the fellow next to you. You have not seen anything yet. Oh, I'm going to be very great. Oh. <laughs> well, I think Daddy asked me to tell you this, I will. Years ago, when the Almighty God provided us with a jet, oh, there was a lot of noise. People were criticizing me right, left, and center. They sent EFCC to come and probe me. Where did he get the money to buy a jet? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. The noise was much. Then one day I was flying. Because I didn't buy a jet for pleasure. The work has expanded to a level that there's no way 
I can do it by commercial traveling. But if you want to travel by commercial, you have to wait for their timetable. If I have to wait for their timetable, I won't be able to do what God wants me to do. I mean, to give you an example, I finished a, our European convention in Spain one night. 33 nations gathered together. As soon as I dismissed the program around 12 midnight, I headed straight to the airport to travel over to Hong Kong. I arrived in Hong Kong the following day, did what I needed to do, and then moved on to Singapore. I arrived in Singapore, did what I needed to do, and then headed for Australia. I got to Australia, did what I needed to do, I headed to Papua New Guinea. You can do all those, and I, I needed to touch all those places, minister to them, de dedicate the churches, uh, ordain pastors, and be back before the next Holy Ghost service. There's no way I can do that by the commercial pile. Lane. That's, that's what led to the jet. The noise was great. And I was becoming a bit disturbed. Father, what do I do now? And then one day I was, I was flying. It was during the day. Far above the cloud. And I just felt the Holy Spirit saying, look out of the window and I looked out of the window I said Lord I, I can't see anything I said look on look down look down at the at the cloud so I looked down and I saw a rainbow now normally a rainbow is an arc but this rainbow that I saw was a complete circle and it was extremely big and I looked down into the center of the rainbow and I see the shape of a plane. And as the, it looks as if the rainbow was moving, always keeping the plane in the middle. And the Lord said to me, son, the shadow you see is the shadow of this your plane. I have you surrounded. I decree to somebody here today, my father, who is a consuming fire, will surround you. He said to me, don't answer them. I have you surrounded. Oh, may the God who surrounds me surround you. <laughs> Sorrow wants to come. Knocking at the door. The one who says, I see your joy before. We'll go and opened it. Yes, what do you want? No, 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 I don't know you live here. From this moment onward, no evil will come into your house. The conclusion of the matter is that right now he's asking for your permission to come in. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Revelation 3, verse 20. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door unto me, I will come in 
I will sup with him and he with me. He said, I'm ready to come in. Come into your heart. Somebody has said, Daddy, when you are ministering, you will stop and say, Ah, there's someone here. Ah, there's someone here. And then we will discover later on when the fellow comes to testify. He said, But how do you hear the voice in the midst of all the noise around? It's not out there, it's in. It's in me. When he comes in you, you begin to hear his voice, small, still voice. How many of you would love to prophesy? <laughs> you want me to decree? Are you sure? And some of the things he may tell you may not be the kind of thing you want to hear, but it will be the truth. Are you sure you want me to decree? Before the end of this month, you'll be hearing from him. And that is a decree, yeah. not a prophecy. You know, the beauty about hearing from him is that no fake prophet can deceive you. A prophet will come and say, I received this one from the Lord. You say, eh, I didn't receive it. <laughs> the Bible made it clear. My sheep hear my voice. You can never be deceived again when you begin to hear from God yourself. Let me tell you one thing, and this is for your ears only. Anyone who's prophesying now, telling you this is a fellow who will win, this is a fellow who is is deceiving you. You know why? Daddy has not spoken yet. He hasn't said anything. So if you say somebody released a prophecy and saying that somebody from this place is a man lie. Who said so? Your daddy. Daddy, for what reason or the other, he has been very quiet on this one. You say, ah, but daddy, this is uh, January. Uh, I know. You should tell us so that we will know. Uh, can I tell you what he hasn't told me? You want me to lie to you? And uh, what are we going to get your PVC ready? If he doesn't say anything, when it is time to vote, vote as uh, the Spirit of God will direct you. If he tells me, well, I may tell you or I may not. <laughs> That's why you must let him come into you. So you can hear from him directly and nobody will be able to deceive you anymore so those of us who are already children of God congratulations if you are not a child of God yet you have an opportunity tonight come forward very quickly I will count from 1 to 15 because I know you some of you are very far away tonight so I count from 1 to 15. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, if you want him to come and dwell in you, run forward to the altar so that I can pray for you and God will save your soul.
those of you who are already before the altar and those of you who are on the way, cry to the Almighty God. I want your salvation, Lord. I want you to come and dwell in me so I can begin to hear your voice so that you can begin to direct my path. Save my soul. Wash away my sins. And I will obey you. Whatever you say, that's what I will do. Cry to God. Now the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these, our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them. That the one who saved our souls, the greater one who is dwelling in us, will begin to dwell in them too. Those of you on the way, keep coming, keep coming. Make sure you get there before I finish praying. Come now, very quickly. Come and call on the Lord. Ask him to save your soul. Ask him to come and dwell in you. Call on him. Call on him. Call on him. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. King of glory, I just want to worship your holy name. You are very wonderful. One of the wonders that you do is salvation of souls. You can take a sinner and turn him to a saint. Thank you for those who have come forward today. Please receive them. Amen. Save their souls. Amen. Let your blood wash them clean. Amen. Please, Lord God Almighty, come and dwell in them Amen. and begin to speak to them. Amen. Begin to guide them. Amen. And from now, anytime they cry unto you, answer them by fire. Amen. And don't let them ever backslide. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Now, you want to write down your prayer points. Tonight, you're going to really, really pray. Prayer point number one, I want you to praise God double. You praise him more than you've ever done before. Spent quality time praising him. Then number two, you will say, Father, please put all my problems under your feet permanently. Put all my problems under your feet permanently. Number three. Father, please arise for me. Just arise for me tonight. Number four, Father, please pay me a personal visit tonight. Give me a divine earthquake. Pay me a personal visit tonight. Give me a divine earthquake. Number five. Father, please go to my earthly source. And uproot every evil there.
Please go to my earthly source and uproot every evil there. Number six, Father, please go to my future and erase any evil waiting for me. Go to my future tonight and erase any evil waiting for me. Number seven, Father, pick me up tonight and promote me everlastingly. Pick me up tonight and promote me everlastingly. Number eight, Father, please keep me forever secure in the hollow of your hand. Keep me forever secure in the hollow of your hand. Number nine, Father, please increase my strength. My ability to succeed. From within me. Increase my strength, my ability to succeed from within me. Number 10. Father, reign supreme within me. Reign supreme within me. Number 11. Father, please begin to speak to me loud and clear. Let me begin to hear from you. Number 12 will be your individual requests for this year. The altar is open, and I won't disturb you for the next 30 minutes at least, so you can have plenty of time talking to the Lord.
Aleluia. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In the name of the one called Wonderful, the Lord Jesus himself, all your prayers tonight will be answered by fire. Before the sun rises tomorrow, you will be shouting wonderful. And for the rest of this year, on a daily basis, God will do something wonderful for you. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. God bless you. Let's go back to our seats.